Hello and welcome to Design Patterns. Today we are going to talk about the observer. What is the observer? First, what is the context in which the observer can be applied? We have an application where data is distributed over multiple objects, which are changing every now and then. What does this mean? For example, we have an application where users can create or delete data entries or manipulate them. And of course, we have an application where objects change its, each other's properties or objects or properties of ob objects generally change sometime. What is the problem here? Of course, sometimes we want to, to react on these changes. Sometimes we want to be informed when data changes in applications and the observer is a design pattern which handles this. Why is this difficult, you may ask? Ah, yes, of course. The first difficulty is we want to react on data changes in objects, but we don't know when these changes happen. Of course, we could program it hard-coded in our source code that we every time an object or a property is changed, we update some other uh, object. This would solve it. But then we are strictly bound to the other object. And what if there are more objects than just this one? The other way around would be to constantly ask other objects is your property changed? Is your property changed? Polling. But this polling is very costly. It costs CPU time, it costs calls. If it's over the internet, it takes very long. Polling is maybe not cost is maybe too costly or even not possible. If you ask for so many data changes that it takes very long, then you can't do it. And sometimes you even don't know the objects. You don't know the object which actually holds the data or you have no direct reference to it. Objects should not need to know who's, who, which other objects should be informed. Of course, some point in time they have to know. So during runtime, when everything is, is set up, they have to know when you uh, which other objects to inform but not at compile time we want to be flexible and dynamic at compile time that's one challenge we want to fulfill and in the end reuse should also be possible our notification system should work for other types of listeners too and listeners should be able to listen to other types of objects too it should be applicable to many situations the solution to this or the design pattern to this is the observer. And the basic idea is we want to inform registered observers about changes, or we could also call them listeners. How does this look like? First, we have a subject. A subject contains the data which changes. And from the subject, derived is the concrete subject. We are not bound to a concrete instance and concrete class anymore. We are bound to the interface. And this interface defines three methods or three basic ideas. First, you need to have some attach method, some way to register for changes. This is the attach method. An observer attaches itself to the subject and the responsibility of the subject then is whenever a property gets changed, data gets changed, it has to update to inform all observers. It has to maintain some list of observers which should be updated. Of course, we want to provide some detach method. The observers can also detach if they don't want to be informed anymore. And the subject need to have some notify method. The notify method is then the actual notification of the observers. When you derive uh, a concrete subject from this subject, of course you have some state, you have some properties which change, and whenever a property gets changed, you should call the notify, and the notify updates then all observers. What is the responsibility of the observers? Let's jump to the other side. 
The observer interface has one method, which is called update. Whenever the subject data is changed, it calls the update method of the observer. Concrete observers, of course, react somehow on this. They have to override the update method and do something whenever they get changed. And this is the classical implementation by the gang of four. They say, okay, it's the observer's responsibility to get the, the changed state. So that's why they um, implemented it like this. The observer has to call the get state method of the subject and has, has to react somehow on this state. But there are different implementations also possible. This is the default one. What is the solution? We have to define some means to manage observers, to register or unregister them, or to attach or detach them. Whenever something changes, we have to notify all observers that a change happened. And in the end, we have to give the observers the possibility to somehow access the change data, either via parameters or via a get data or some access to the change data. We are able to decouple subjects and observers. They don't know each other anymore. We can reuse them. An observer can be used for other subjects too, as long as they have the same interface. And subjects work without having an observer, so in isolation. We don't need to poll because subjects inform the observers actively. We support end-to-end -end communication. One observer could be reused for multiple subjects or could be registered to multiple subjects and the subject could have multiple observers. But we have a problem of unexpected updates or frequent updates. What about when the subject updates a million times per second and the observer has to do some really hard number crunching and uses up all CPU? Then we have a problem. In this case, we should think about having some mechanism to avoid such cascading updates or frequent updates. One solution could be synchronous versus asynchronous updates. So should the notify method run synchronously or asynchronously? There are pros and cons. If we run synchronously, we can ensure consistency of a system. If we run asynchronously, then the system is fast. We don't have to wait for all observers before our notify method finishes, but it could happen that the observers are informed too late and that another change in the meantime happens. Maybe we should do some locking the next change is only possible when all observers have been informed. Then who initiates the update? Should the subject itself initiate the update? Should the updater initiate the update? First do the update and then like commit. A subject could look like this. This is C sharp. We have an interface subject, which has a list of observers and has the attach and detach method. Of course, we have this notify method which updates all observers. We have a observer class, which only has the update method. And then we have a concrete subject. For example, this subject has uh, some state and a property of state. And whenever the property is set, we call the notify method. Here we made the decision to call the notify method after the state is updated. Sometimes it's implemented like this, that it's before the state is updated, or after and before the change. And in the end here, we have our concrete observer, which attaches to the subject in its constructor. This is one way how to implement this. And on update, it just writes the update out on the console. Our main method now looks like this. We have the concrete subject, we have the concrete observer, and by giving the observer the subject in its constructor, we attach to it. Then whenever we change the state, for example, in this case, we set s.state equals to change one, the observer prints this to the console. If you think of observer in an abstract way, think of this caller and some listeners who listen for change. Okay. That's the observer.